Hello and welcome to the Big Bark Podcast, bringing you the latest news from the canine world. Each week we talk to different professionals working in the canine industry across Ireland, from pet shop owners to groomers, behaviour specialists and vets. We will be discussing hot topics with our puppy panel, reviewing the best products, food and treats, the best places to take your dog on a day out and the most dog-friendly venues in Ireland. We'll also be chatting with dog owners to find out more about the bonds that make a dog man's best friend. Your host for this podcast is Dara Burke, a dog lover with a passion for canine psychology and behaviour. Dara's own dogs, Bruno and Millie, will also join in from time to time and will be sure to offer their own big bark along the way. Time to bring on your host and start the show. Big welcome to episode 3 of the Big Bark Podcast, your source for all things doggy related across Ireland and now the UK. We have spread to the UK as well and we have developed quite the following in the UK. The Big Bark is brought to you by BarkingMad.ie. I'm your host, Dara Burke, and this week I am going to be changing things up a fair bit. So... After the last two episodes, I got some great feedback. And the feedback was some really good constructive criticism about different changes that could be made with the show. And you know what? I've just decided that I'm going to roll with this. So this week, I'll be bringing in those changes. And I'm really looking forward to these. We're going to be playing our new game, which will be a regular feature on our show, called Guess That Crossbreed. Now, if you've been following us over on the gram for the last few days, you'll be familiar with this already. We'll be chatting about what's hot in the news. Of course, everything related to dogs and not the shite that you see on Sky News. We will also be reviewing some great products. Particularly this week, we're going to have a focus on the different interactive security type cameras and two-way communication systems that are available for you to keep an eye on your dog when you're out of the house or to chat with your dog if you feel that your dog needs chats during the day. Okay, so we have one other big feature and that is our adopted corner. We will be focusing on a different dog charity each week. And we will be selecting a rare, well, a very small handful. We'd love to look at them all, but we're going to be featuring a very small handful of doggies who are looking for their forever homes. Now, this week, we're focusing on Dog Action Welfare Group in County Cork. These guys do amazing work, and they're based in Donnerail in County Cork. So if you ever have a chance to go down, certainly do. We're going to be going down in the next few weeks, and I can't wait for it. Okay, but first of all, I'm delighted to introduce our very first puppy panel. The puppy panel consists of dog owners and dog lovers who will be sharing their stories about their own dogs. And joining me this week is Kelly from Tala in Dublin, who will be chatting about her awesome Border Collie Labrador Cross, Marley, and the amazing bonds that the two of them share together and how Marley has influenced and changed her life for the better. We also have Michael joining us from all the way across the sea in London. And we're really excited to chat to Michael about his six-month-old Pomeranian named Burley. Now, Burley is quite the dog on the celebrity circuit. Burley has cuddled with Harry Potter himself, Mr. Daniel Radcliffe. Amelia Clark, who many of you who have been watching Game of Thrones for the last number of years, will know uh, stars in the show as Daenerys. And look, I'm going to be honest, I'm one of the few people who has never actually seen an episode of Game of Thrones. And I'm told it's something I need to actually look at. So we'll see about that. And we also have this week... 
It's all about the bonds. It's about the connections that we share with our dogs. Now, it's a much shorter episode, and we're simply focusing on the dogs here. We're not going to be doing an hour 15. That is, I think, a way too long to be listening to my voice for a start. We're also leaving out, uh, just for this week, our Big Bark Featured Business. But don't worry, we're going to have another brilliant dog business owner, or canine professional, on with hers on the next episode. So, without delaying any more, and without my usual waffling on, let's go and meet our puppy panel. Of course, two guests on our puppy panel as always... My beautiful blood of all Bruno and my wonderful golden Labrador Millie who are right here next to me for the entire show looking for attention as they always do. Kelly, you were on with us last week uh, talking about purple wolves. Uh, but today you're talking about your own dog. Tell us about your dog. Well, my dog's a cross between a collie and a lab. So it's an amazing mix. Um, you have the collie intense look which he gets fixated on, so it's great to deal with. Um, but I couldn't ever, ever replace him. He's just an amazing dog, very affectionate, very loyal, and eager to learn. So he's just an amazing dog to be around. He has helped me through a lot of life challenges, and he keeps making me go. So it's amazing. Brilliant. And Michael, uh, tell us about Bali. So Bailey is is a six months old Pomeranian. He's just very affectionate and really he's such a beautiful dog. Like he loves playing with children, loves learning new things. He's got a funny little personality. Yeah, he's just amazing. Perfect. Okay. So what I'm gonna do is basically just kind of ask you a few questions about your I suppose your relationship with your dogs and how they have affected your lives. So Michael, I'm gonna start off with you and like you mentioned Barley is six months old. Yeah. What what kind of an impact has Barley had on your life? Oh, it's just completely changed it because we used to go out socialising quite a lot, even though we still take him everywhere we go, but now we can't go to some some places. So it's just completely changed it. So yeah. It's just it's just completely oh, it's just taking over, really. Which is great. We love we love the fact that we've got him and we take him everywhere. Brilliant. And just touch on that, you said there's some places that you can take him. A lot of people say that Ireland isn't completely dog friendly and there's been so many campaigns to make Ireland more dog friendly. What's it like over in the UK? Because we live in London, so it's there's quite a lot of places that are very uh, dog friendly, but you do come across places that you know they they don't allow dogs into pubs and stuff. But where we live, it's it is there's so many places that we can take Burley, take them into hotel hotels and everything. So it's quite oh, yeah. it's quite good. And hopefully that's something that we see kind of developing more and more here in Ireland. Now, Kelly. Uh, Marley, you said, has helped you get through a lot of uh, life's, I suppose, life's challenges. Talk to me a bit about that. How has, like, how has he, like, helped you? In- well, he's made me go forward to my passion in life, which is dealing with dogs. And basically, he's helped me through a lot of my own life challenges. But, yeah, no, he's actually made me come out of my comfort zone. Um, he's made me realise that even though he is... He's actually quite reactive himself. We both help each other and we're both going out of our comfort zones. I'm getting out more, especially around other dogs and people that talk about dogs. So it's definitely like has made me grow as a person. And he's just one of those dogs that just has that way about him that he just sits beside you. He doesn't even need any attention. He'll just sit beside you knowing that he's around. And yeah, like he's just helped me with actually going into my life passion now as well. I do think that our dogs are they, that bond that we they share with us. Uh, it really does help. Uh, it's like dogs just they know dogs know what we're feeling. Yeah, definitely. They really pick up on. They don't even need attention. They just need to be beside you, and they're happy. And that's that's what's so good about them. It's unconditional love, and you always have that there. Whether things are tough, but you're humans in life, they're there, and it really helps you get on with life. Brilliant. 
Well, I'm going to come back to you there for a second. And obviously, the one thing that I'm very excited to hear about is <laughs> how does a, a six-month-old dog from London go to meet the likes of Amelia Clark and Daniel Radcliffe? Like, how, how did that even come about? So my partner works in, uh, he's a fashion hairdresser, so he gets to meet like he gets to work with lots of celebrities and he does like editorials. So he take so uh, the, so the, the stars of, like Amelia Clark and people like that. I'd seen Burley on Ken's Ken's profile, and they're like bring bring along Burley. So they absolutely love him. So they're always asking for Burley to come along. So then on the, the day he was with Lily Collins, and then Daniel Radcliffe was actually in the same hotel because he was doing a press junket, and his PR. And said, "Oh, look at this! Come, come! Can I introduce the dog to Daniel?" So then Daniel got to meet Burla, which was amazing. Cause I was at work at the time, and my partner Ken sent me the picture. And I nearly fell out. I nearly fell out with grain. <laughs> <laughs> I would say so. And looking at that through the through the Instagram profile as well, Amelia Clark. I believe I know. I'm not a big Game of Thrones person myself. Oh. Actually, I, I I I haven't seen a single episode of it. I've been told I need to watch it. But yeah. for anyone who is familiar with uh, Game of Thrones, they don't know Amelia Clark. And- so, because my partner was basically doing doing a hair for an event, so then she'd seen the dog as well, and she asked asked my partner to bring the dog along. Oh, so then brilliant! Got to, meet, got to meet Amelia Clark as well. That's yeah. that's really interesting. And like, obviously, did you did you get to meet myself or? So I got I got to meet Amelia Clark on the second time that uh, Burley had met. Amelia, and she's she's such a lovely person. Yeah, you know she ended up gave she gave because I, we went in and then she she said that she had a, a, a raincoat coat which she gave to Burley. So Burley's got a, a raincoat that Amelia Clark gifted to him, which is oh, amazing. Wow. Oh God, can I do the dog? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a dog's life. I, I, I'd love his. I'd love his life. <laughs> he's opening doors like he's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's it's like he's got a Wikipedia page. Someone set up a Wikipedia page for him. He's uh, he's been in. Uh, he's he's actually going to be in um, a prime Primark uh, campaign because he did some modelling modelling for him on Friday, uh, which possibly could be in pennies as well in Ireland. So oh, very nice, brilliant, <laughs> very nice. Uh, well, we we all know pennies over here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But well, actually, that's that's one thing. Pennies is, I do believe they are launching like a, kind of a dog range as well. I heard that there a few months back and I haven't really seen much of that. Yeah, well, that's amazing. So Kelly, has um, has Marley met any famous people or celebrities or anything? Or? Oh, like I need to go over to England, but I'm telling you. <laughs> 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 you oh, talk about so, Burley. <laughs> yeah, literally, I just, should just go over there and just like, like oh yeah. I'll come over. Let me play with your dog. Oh yeah, I'll get the doors open. Sorted. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> and uh, Kelly, like, what kind of things do you and Marley like to do together? Um, we actually go up to the I won't say the name, but uh, we go up to these woods. Um, basically, has barely any dogs in it, so I can let him off leads. And him being reactive and all, he's not so good with other dogs. Um, so, yeah, no, it's just when you get to the top, it's like you just take it all in. You can see the city, Dublin City, and then um, you can also see the coastline from where we are. And it's just an amazing experience. It gets me out of the house, gets him out of the house, and we do a lot of enrichment things on walk as well, so loves his treats. Um, so, yeah, no, he just, he just gets me out and walk in new experiences it's great to share new experience with him like bring him to the beach and all wasn't too much of a fan of that one now but <laughs> he does love the woods now that would be our big thing brilliant and michael what about your self and body what, what is it you love to do uh, well we actually took him to see the lion king at the cinema uh, a couple of weeks oh ago, my god you, you can do that <laughs> so we, we 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 found this event on um it's called the long dog uh which kind of does like uh, it tell, tells you about what's going going on for dogs. So we and it was a cinema for the Lion King. So we took him along, and uh, there was like loads of dogs there. And normally, people get really upset when people start talking for a, for a cin- for the film, but the dogs were barking. Everyone was loving <laughs> it. And it was just amazing. So we like taking places like that. Take him. Uh, oh God, what else do we do? We do loads with him. We always take him to little dog shows in around London. Oh, that's amazing. 
that is actually amazing. I'd love to be able to bring them to something like that. That uh, they should do more things like that in Dublin. I think. I do know that there was in Dublin. Was it last year or the year before that there was one cinema? I yeah. could be out in that mines, I think, or somewhere maybe. Yeah. Or, yeah, I know and they did a dog friendly event, but like apart from that, like I haven't seen. I think it was for Secret Life of Pets or Dog Sport for some yeah. of those films. And yeah. I've had. Apart from that, I haven't seen any other cinema in Ireland that has done that. No, <laughs> no, there wouldn't be. Like, um, see, most people now were like, they, in Dublin, there's a lot of dogs um, that wouldn't be able to go to things like that. So you're nearly like setting it up for a disaster. And Joe, with the restrictions as well, yeah. that's yeah. going to minimise who they can bring. So um, not a lot of them. But I think even a park or something and, you know, setting up like would be brilliant. Yeah, Absolutely. Right. Yeah, they, we're take, we're taking him to Windsor Castle because there's like a dog event on that. For, it's like called Travel Fest, but Bailey's got special permission to get into it because yeah, I don't know I don't know why they, they wanted Bailey to come, but he's he's going to that. And we're also we're also going to be bringing over him over to Ireland in a couple of weeks. So he's going to be on his first first trip abroad. Oh my yeah. god! I have to see this dog. <laughs> so we're, 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 we're driving. We're driving. We're driving. Um, and we're going to stay in Donegal. To see oh, lovely. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is it's a new part I'm introducing to the show. I'm going to do a little, I suppose, a little game. Now the game is basically guess that crossbreed. Wait, okay. So the first one, I'm going to let each of you take a guess of these, and then I'm going to give you the correct answer. Uh, Kelly, I'll let you go first. Um, a collie cross with uh, could be a it could be a. Actually, I'm not sure if this one is actually a crossbreed. No, so I'm right. It's collie. It's probably a smooth collie or something like that. No, right. Okay, Michael. <laughs> I'd say a collie with a Malamute. Yeah. But it's now the actual name of it is. It's a beautiful dog. It is an Australian Shepherd dog. Oh. oh my god! Do you yeah. think it's Polly? <laughs> okay, so, we're okay, so we'll move on to the second one. Uh, that's a husky cross with I don't know. It's still a puppy, so it could get bigger with his paws. So probably a husky cross with uh, I'm gonna say collie. Don't know why, but the eyes. What would you I think? So I'd say husky with possibly a chihuahua. I know it's a strange mix, but... I think now Michael was closer on that one. This is a pomsky. Pomsky. It is a husky cross with a palm. Now, I don't even know how that even happens. Because a palm is is so tiny and a husky is so big. We was in the park the other day and we had, we'd actually seen a really strange cross. It was a staff there and a Pomeranian and we was like, how did that actually happen? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. That's weird. That's mad. <laughs> Don't okay. No. Oh, a samurai cross with a retriever, maybe. What do you think, Michael? I think that's got Pomeranian in it. With a lab, maybe a lab. I really need to make these bits so go forward, I think. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this one is a breed I had never actually heard of before today. But it is called a go a Goberian. It is a golden retriever crossed with a Siberian husky. Oh. That's a mad one. Looks like a samurai. He really does, doesn't he? Very similar. Yeah. In the face. Yeah. But so beautiful as well. Yeah, they are. They're gorgeous. Now, okay, we'll move on to the fourth one. Now, this is a very, very interesting one that I did not even know existed until I was looking these up. I think that one's a bit obvious, that one. Okay, go ahead, Michael. I think it's a dash hound with a, uh, with a Dalmatian. What do you think, Kelly? I was going to go with a dash hound, probably with a... Oh, I don't know. He's telling me a bit with his eyes. Um, dash hound mixed with something else, anyway. <laughs> And Michael, you are right on the Dalmatian. It is called a Dalmatian. That's amazing. You'd wonder, like, where some of these breeds even. How do they even breed, though? (laughs) Okay, so 
This one. Oh, that's I'd, a... I'd say a Corgi with an Alsatian. I could say a German Shepherd with a Corgi. Okay, let's see. A Corgi and German Shepherd. Yay! And technically, like, a German Shepherd is also known as an Alsatian, so you're both right. Yay! <laughs> Yay! Okay. We got one. Oh, look at so this one. little ball of fluff. That's a hard one, right? Um, maybe a Yorkie cross with uh, a terrier or something. Yeah, I'd, right. I'd say like a kind of terrier. Well, it, ter- it looks like a terrier, but then I yeah. think it's Pomeranian. <laughs> We're gonna go with Pomeranian for everything. <laughs> like they're all mixed today. <laughs> Pomeranian on the brain. It is a noodle. Noodle. Oh my god! A Yorkshire terrier cross on a poodle. All right, around just missing the poodle part. <laughs> so this one. That. That to me looks like a beagle cross with a German Shepherd or a, a lab, maybe it's something like that. What do you think, Michael? Yeah, it's insane. It looks, yeah. Okay, yeah. let's see. Beagle. Beagle, yeah. German Shepherd. <laughs> we got two. We got two. <laughs> okay, and I think this could be the last one. Oh. Uh, it's got to be that, a husky, that. A husky with a chihuahua. Did I say that before? I can't remember. That's yeah, or, or a husky with a shih tzu or something with the tail. Yeah. Then again, it could be a pomsky. Yeah, it's got the Spitz family. Cause it's it is a hoggy. Hoggy? Oh, oh my God. Husky and a corgi. Like, how does that even happen? No, I don't. It's like, what, did they hold them up? <laughs> you <laughs> one, no, I just get one, get the husky to lie down or something. Or... Oh my God, no. The mechanics, anyway. Either way, like it's not something I ever want to see happen. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that's the last one. Uh, what did you get? You got two over. So not bad. Not bad. Okay. Times, like, have you ever seen a, a Dima D- or Dima or something like that? No. Delmoa or something like that. It's pronounced real weird, but um, basically the, the, the head looks like a Chewbacca. Joe Chewbacca from Star Wars? Yeah. Tiny little body that's like a terrier body. It's so bizarre looking. But uh, so Chewbacca mixed with a terrier, huh? Yeah. That's a funny mix. It's okay. down a lot or something like that. Anyway, so, I have a few, I suppose, topics that I want to uh, kind of bring up and talk to you both about and kind of get your opinions on this. So yeah. this kind of Kelly is maybe a continuation on from the animal welfare stuff that we were talking yeah. on last week, and also from episode one where I was talking about the restrictive breeds list. So over in the US, this was actually on CNN, uh, I believe, yesterday. So owner of dogs that mauled a nine-year-old girl to death has been charged with murder in the US. So a uh, nine-year-old Emma Hernandez was riding her bike near her home in Detroit when she was attacked by three loose pit bulls. She was rushed to hospital, but she died from her injuries. And the dog's owner, Pierre Cleveland, was charged with second-degree murder and involuntary manslaughter. The investigators found that the yard's fence was damaged and not secure. So I suppose this goes back to placing a lot more blame and responsibility on the owners rather than on the dogs. We need that in over in Ireland. That is actually amazing to see that it's actually the owner's fault, not the dog. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. It's definitely yeah. the owner's. Well, yeah, what do you think of that, Michael? Is it something that's needed in the UK as well? or? Yeah, definitely. It's, it's, it's down to the, the owner's responsibility. It should be down to the dogs. Cause dogs can't yeah. look after themselves, can they? They need us to depend on to, to yeah. depend on us. Yeah. And exactly. totally reading, great. reading up on this this morning, uh, even uh, the dog's owner, the police and all, had actually requested that he secure the fence. And he, even the father of the girl, in this case, had actually had arguments with him about securing the fence. But so like in the end, it just it's sure to be too late. Yeah, definitely. That dog, that dog. If he had a, um, if the owners of that dog had a put the um, responsibility on themselves and done everything they could to protect uh, people outside, then you wouldn't have had that. That wouldn't have even happened. Now there is a. I actually came across this one on the Daily Mirror. Someone sent this on to me there yesterday. So there's a new 
book uh, called Dog is Love. It's from Dr. Clive Wynn over in the UK. And basically, he looks into the uh, link between humans and dogs. And recent studies have actually proved that over thousands of years, dogs have developed facial muscles so they can make their eyes appear larger and their eyebrows express out to respond to uh, to plant and nurture and response in us, aka the puppy dog guys. Oh yeah, I've I have actually heard about this one now. That was a, that was a great great scientific uh, discovery because uh, it's actually what we always say. Um, well, I always say is they do they can control us. They just give us the puppy dog eyes, and it's like oh that one more meat. Yeah, I'll give you that meat after. I promise. <laughs> you feel so guilty, but yeah, even like expressing themselves on what they want, they're very good at doing that as well. Um, so yeah, no, I definitely agree with that. What do you think, Michael? Yeah, definitely. Like they, they know how to work. They know how to work us. Oh yeah, to, those puppy dog guys. <laughs> Brilliant. especially when you go in the kitchen they know exactly we've got a little drawer in the in the living room and it's where we keep all like crisps and sweets and stuff and as soon as i go to that drawer he knows that he's getting he wants something out of that drawer he's like i want because it's just the rattling of the crisps he loves and it's just he's got his attention just rattle a packet of crisps and, he, and then that's it yeah it literally became a little trigger for him he's like oh there he goes he's going for the food <laughs> i'm gonna get it <laughs> Or even when, like, you're eating or something and you come in and you're finished eating, even though they're not there and they're, like, looking at you, it's just something on that plate for me. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And uh, Bruno and Millie are the exact same. The minute they hear a rapper, it's like, what have you got for me? They, yeah. they know straight away that, like, that you have something. Yeah, definitely. Oh, yeah. High valuable, valuable. If you've got it, I want it. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. their model. So one other thing I'm going to, like, kind of look at here is uh, kind of get your own input on this too like it's a few different things I've actually reviewed uh, basically like security cameras uh, for your home like if you're away at work or anything and your dog is at your home so that you can actually uh, chat with your dog now the first two are kind of fairly expensive ones this one is called the Furbo it has a two way communication and you can see and hear your dog and you can dispense uh, treats from them and they can hear you as well as the speaker and it. Um, this one I was 179 uh, sterling. Uh, it starts with so it's, it's one of those kind of towards those expensive ones. But what's your what's your thoughts on security cameras for like two way communication for when you're not home so that yeah, you can I, actually communicate? With you I like. definitely get one, but I, we don't we don't need one at the moment because Billy basically comes everywhere with us. But like in the future, if we can't actually take him somewhere, then we would definitely buy by two-way communications because then because we 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 can we have um an echo room so we can just drop into the, on the echo show at the moment yeah we <laughs> think we get a furbo we definitely get a furbo <laughs> what do you think Ali? i don't know how i feel about them I, I i do believe in the whole um you know seeing the camera and and actually dispensing the food and all that but i don't know how i feel about the two-way street communication because if a dog had separation anxiety, you're gonna just you're gonna just uh, build it up because he can't find you when he's there looking for you. You know that kind of way. Yeah, no, that's so right. Know. Okay, so huh? the next one that I actually had a look at was yeah. pet chats. Now this one is a, a much more interesting one. This one actually has like a little uh, button, and the dog can press. And if he wants to call you, it's essentially a phone for your dog to call you. Now I honestly don't know how I feel about this myself because. When I come home from work every day, Bruno is literally like crying at me, crying his eyes out. Even though my dad will be here like during the day, like he literally just does not shut up for about twenty minutes, like literally jumping on top of me. And it's like as if he's saying, "Like where were you all day?" You're and giving out to me. I can imagine that he'd literally be pressing this every ten minutes to the day. Oh yeah, I'm sure he would. <laughs> He'd be like, "Oh yeah," but it's also a tra- you have to train them how to use it as well, and that's going to be a, a hard one in itself. And then, and then you're going to be getting calls every few minutes. <laughs> it's like, oh, I press this button and I can see them. <laughs> I don't, I don't like the idea of it. It's just something that doesn't appeal to me at yeah, all. Yeah. Okay. It's too- too much of a technological world as it is. <laughs> the yeah, it's like it. just coming home and your dog seeing you and making all the fuss over seeing you rather than constantly calling you and then it's like, oh, she's back. 
yeah. or oh he's back <laughs> okay well the one that I actually like have myself is it only costs like 20 30 quid for it and it's literally kind of don't know if you can see it's actually up there in the very top corner of the roof so I had okay. that angled and it's more like I, I suppose with like I live in the country so it's like all like the threats of breakings and everything nowadays and like when people break in they don't care if it's nowadays they don't care if it's a dog there they'll they'll harm a dog they won't care about doing it they'll they'll do what they're there to do yeah like for me that's more kind of I suppose a peace of mind thing like I never actually I suppose have the microphone on it so that they can hear me because like as you said yourself like I don't want to upset these two and yeah and like I did it actually I was standing outside the door one night of my room and I Bruno was in on the bed and I literally just called him over it. and just see him looking around it, like it literally scared the bejesus off him like he didn't know what yeah. to do. but I do think like just from a security point of view it's a it's a good thing to have like just so that you can actually make sure they're okay John today yeah I totally would get one of them no I definitely would get one of them because actually I think what I'm seeing as I can see around the room can it move uh, it can't move but it's a wide angle so it's a hundred yeah no I'd love that I'd rather that than um, interaction one anyway I think would be a great peace of mind so you know what your dog's getting up to during the day perfect okay and is there any products that either of you have come across not even security wise but like good products that you've come across that you that you swear by that you think are like really good for your dog Michael we bought him so much it's ridiculous we bought him the one glad jacket uh, <laughs> um, products though the, the thing that I do love is the treats that we, we buy we buy by Benji but uh, I don't know if you've heard of it uh, the, it's like built on for the dogs um, but we've, we've actually got a discount code if you want if you want, I can give you that if you want it well we bought, we bought him some teddies he, he's, he just loves he, we bought him a specialised teddy from Build a Bear so we um, Oh, that's so cute. He's spoiled. He, he, sleeps, he, he sleeps with him at night time. But, um, and then whenever I want him to go to bed, I just press the voice activator, which talks, and then he, he goes running over to his bed and gets into bed. Oh my God, that's, yeah. that's really helpful. I, I wish I could have more <laughs> I love that, yeah. <laughs> that's amazing. Uh, I bought him a be- we bought him a beautiful jacket from Verdrill, which is, uh, it's, a best- it's, it's got swas- swaspy crystals on it. Uh, oh. My dog will probably trade me in for you, I'm telling you. <laughs> <laughs> That's really cute. I love that. Fair job's really good. Go, go, come there. Kelly, <laughs> what, what about you? What, what's the favourite thing that you... Um, I love his slow feeder, Um, actually, that I've got him because of the collie in him. He needs a lot of mental stimulation, so a lot of enrichment. So I kind of just use all those kind of things. Some of them are maids that I've actually made myself. But yeah, no, you can find it all online that you can, you know, find yourself. But basically, like even wrapping food into a towel and then they have to go dig for it is great. Um, because of him being a collie, he gets bored at eating his food out of just simple things like a bowl wouldn't do it for him. So I'd have to change it up. So yeah, no, it'd be his slow feeder, his con. And then I have a puzzle game for him. That's brilliant. Um, where he slides back and forth and he has to go work for his food. But then the next thing I would say would be his his leads that I've gotten him. The, don't uh, don't tell me to this, but I can't think of the name. But it's like a cross harness one. It's like a, a heel harness, and basically it just comes up at the front and it clips on the side, and it actually helps with a lot of my training up to with, you know, walking them. Um, so yeah, no, that's he loves that as well. He prefers that over the other uh, harnesses. He loves like getting it on as well. So it's brilliant. So I'd have to say them, yeah. <laughs> brilliant. I think for me, it's probably um, like I got the slow feeder for Bruno as well because he like he gulps his food down, like lets it up, yeah, <laughs> inhales it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He inhales the food. So I found like that since I got him the slow feeder. Now it was only one that I picked up an Aldi for like six or seven quid yeah. and an offer. And I found like he's really stoned down. It's um he was getting sick a lot after eating so fast, so it's like really helped with that as well. I suppose treat wise for me would be has to be the raw dry. Actually, give me a moment, I'm gonna pull up a bag of this here because 
I actually, they're going to come running over to me now. So, the order <laughs> is a, they're an Irish company and it's all like a beef and chicken jerky that they make. So, at the moment, I say I was on the show for the first, uh, the first episode. Yeah, yeah, no, that's amazing. That food is, yeah. Like, she's, uh, after announcing this week that all her, like, all pet stuff stores in Ireland will be doing her, doing the jerky now as well, which is a big step for her. Um, amazing. Well, it's like, I think it's actually their favourite treats as well. I've nearly gone last night. I know, okay, I I was a, wee, a small bit, uh, no, was the last night, Friday night, I was uh, having a few drinks and sure. I saw it go up online that she was selling the, the 10-pack for 30 quid, so I picked it up online for uh, from her and I woke up yesterday morning and she was like, hey, I just sent you that invoice. I'm like, invoice? What did I buy off you last night? So, not not the best time to be looking online for a product for your dog, really. But, oh, um, like, down. Like, that's how good the treats are. I've actually gone and ordered, like, another another 10-pack offer. Like. No, the treats that we buy uh, by, ben, by Benji, uh, um, we've got a discount code, which, which is Burley BBA15. It gives us, like, 15% off. So anyone can use it. And they ship to, like, Ireland and Europe. So maybe you should try that. See, see if you like that. Yeah. Because yeah, it's, no, it's actually it's um, it's edible for humans as well, but uh, obviously I wouldn't say for you to go and eat them. <laughs> <laughs> so if it's good enough for us, it's good enough for the dogs. Yeah. Uh, when I opened the um, treat to myself, I was like, "Glad you're not getting any of this." I actually did. And so, <laughs> okay, so one a new feature I'm actually introducing this week. It's going to be in association with different animal rescues every single week. Uh, this week. Uh, it's with Cork Dog Action Welfare Group. They're based in Donnerail in County Cork. And it's basically the adaption call. I'm going to share a bit of information about three or four dogs that are looking for looking for homes. Now, obviously, anyone listening to the podcast can actually see this, but I'll just give a bit of detail of the dogs and they'll be able to check them out on the actual Facebook and the um, websites as well. So the first dog is Amali as well. Uh, <laughs> is a lab cross, he, a puppy. Uh, they, don't, they didn't actually have an age of him up. I think he's around five or six months. Uh, and what I say is he's full of joys of life. He loves people, dogs, and cats. And he's an ideal little family mm-hmm. member. So he's looking for a new home with, uh, with Dog Action Welfare Group. And let's see the next one. Where is that? So we had Ben, who's a Rottweiler. He's between four. Oh, gorgeous. Cute. Uh, he's, uh, they say he's a bit bewildered in kennels, but he's looking for a home experience with the breed and an active home is essential, but they're looking for like, obviously for that. Oh, look, Barley has, <laughs> Barley has joined us. <laughs> oh, he's so cute. Barley oh my God. Mm-hmm. He's amazing. Yeah, no, 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 no. Gotta see what's happening. <laughs> and then, uh, the last one we have is uh, Max, who is a staffy. And Max is also between, I believe, four and seven years as well. And Cute. smiling just the way a sappy should. Oh, my God. He's a beaut, isn't he? Oh, he's gorgeous. And he's he's looking for a new home as well. So what they say about him is he led a very solitary life outside the back garden. And he's adorned his newly discovered home comforts. And he's a fab, loving, loyal, and eager to please boy. Oh, oh. cute. So I'm going to kind of, I suppose wrap up with like just asking the what is your favorite thing your favorite feature that your dog has uh michael i'll let you go first favorite feature my dog has um he's just he's just he's just how warm and kind he is and he's only six months old you just you wouldn't think from the way that he is everyone thinks he's a lot older older when they meet him um and he just attracts so much attention i just love the fact that he's well loved and he's just he's just the most gorgeous dog ever. I know everyone says it about everyone's biased about their own dogs, but he is he's just such such a beautiful nature. Brilliant. Um Kelly, uh what about Miley? Um, it'd have to be his his actual eyes. He has amazing eyes. Um it's probably the collie in him. Uh and his flop ears. Oh, they're just the cutest little thing. Um but I love the fact that he is so friendly and can't wait to say hello to everybody. Um, and he's also a great alert dog as well. Um, and lets me know if someone's at the door. 
not even that he's going to do it <laughs> he's, he'd probably run the other way but it's just a matter of that he's just one of those temperaments that um really bring the life into the house so I love about I love that about him that's pretty awesome and I suppose for me as well like Bruno and Millie they're, they're two completely different dogs we got Bruno when he was like 12 weeks old and like he's become he has become part of the family and Millie she's really I suppose calmed Bruno down like Bruno was really wild when he was younger but like she's really kind of I suppose she's the boss so like she lets him know that she's the boss as well and Actually, she lets all of us know that she's the boss. So if she wants to know, <laughs> it's, I, I just, I love the way that they, they're so, I suppose, attention seeking. But the fact that, like, if something is up or something's bothering you, they know. And, like, it's, they just understand emotion so well. And it's, for me, it's great to have that, that bond there with them. Yeah, yeah. No, definitely. Right. Okay, guys, listen, uh, thanks very much, Michael and Kelly. Thank you both for joining me on the Big Bag today. Uh, I hope to have both of you on again soon. Yeah, yeah. definitely. It's great meeting you, Michael. <laughs> mm-hmm. See you too. Well, we've got some, we'll have, we'll have an update on Burley's career, see what he's been doing up, up, right been up to. And if anyone wants to follow Burley on Instagram, what is the handle? So it's, it's Burley Bear Pom. So it's B U R L Y. B E A R P O M. Brilliant. Brilliant. You have a new following, so. <laughs> and once again, thank you very much to Book Kelly and to Michael for joining me this week on The Big Bark. It was great to have such a fun format to the show and something that we're going to keep on going with going forward. Now, I have to wrap this up because, as always, I have a very, very demanding uh, blonde doggy, a beautiful Millie right here next to me who has decided that it is time to wrap this up. Now, Millie's not going to give an actual back to me. I'm hoping uh, at some stage you're going to like just let out a massive back. But for now, I'm going to say thanks to everyone for listening. Next episode, we will have a couple of different guests on the show. We will be chatting about canine fitness. We will be chatting about canine cross. If I pronounce that wrong, I'm very sorry. We will also be chatting about a probably a shit topic. No pun intended. But we will be chatting to Kiron from Mutmets who provides a dog waste solution to councils. And I'm going to begin Kiron's thoughts on what the current situation is with dog waste. Anyway, I hope everybody here has a great week. And as always... Stay back in mat.